today we're going to show you how to prep a follower for a Glock magazine with a Dawson Precision base pad to attain maximum capacity. Some of the followers, especially the later style ones, uh, can get caught in the transition between the base pad and the tube, which uh, will not let it load to maximum capacity. It's a simple fix. All we're going to do is put some small radiuses on the back side of the follower, which help it transition into the tube. So the first step we're going to cover is kind of the tools that you're going to need. Uh, the files and the sandpaper is kind of an either or thing. A file will work, a sanding block will work, or you can have sandpaper on a block. Either one of those will work just fine. Uh, we'll demonstrate the technique with all three that way it'll make it easy for you. Um, so the next step is going to be disassembling the factory Glock magazine, removing the retainer plate and the base pad. And that's simply uh, depressing in with a small punch, a uh, retainer plate, pushing it forward, sliding it off. Always face this away from your face so the spring doesn't hit you in the head. Hold your thumb over the retainer plate. Remove the base pad, the retainer plate, and the spring. And then remove the spring from the follower. We will not be using the factory spring because of the extended base pad. We're going to need an extended spring, and that comes in the Glock kit. Okay, we're going to go ahead and assemble it with the Dawson Precision parts first and load it to show you what potentially can happen and uh, where this follower with the standard configuration in the back of it will impede the loading of the magazine. So to install the follower, you simply push it. It'll clip on there. It'll retain itself, and it's that simple. We're going to install the spring and follower into the mag tube. We're going to install the Dawson Precision base pad. Simply line it up with the retaining flange into the groove in the base pad. Rock it over, and then slide the gate back, and that's as simple as it is. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and load this one to capacity and see just how many rounds we can get in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14 and if you'll notice 14 window is showing a, a cartridge and 15 takes it to the standard capacity. We're going to go ahead and load 16, 17, 18 it's getting real tight so this follower is now tending to hang up on the transition area between the tube and the follower. So. We're going to prep that follower real quick, and that's going to show you how much better it'll work when we do this. Some of the older style followers, this is not necessary, but uh, it seems that as of late, these new followers uh, are a little bit wider at the base, and so um, what we're going to do is make it a uh, a small radius on the back side to make that transition smoother into the base pad. As I said, you can use a sanding block, a file, or sandpaper on a flat surface. Either one will work fine. Most people have a file, so we'll use the file. And what we're going to do is we're going to simply roll a nice little radius on the back side of this follower. And we're not trying to take any length off of it. What we're trying to do is just put a small radius on the back of that follower. Once we get the bottom or the bottom ledge radius, we're going to go ahead and radius the corners just a little bit. And what's that that's going to do is that's going to alleviate any sharp edge that that follower can have as it transitions from the bottom of the tube 
into the back of the base pad. Now we've, when we machine this base pad, we actually put a small chamfer on it. You can see we even put a, a scallop cut on the sides of it. But f on these newer followers, uh, because they are so wide, this little uh, radius that we're putting on there uh, facilitates loading to full capacity. So if you look, all I've done is put a radius here and here. There's some flashing here. Let me get that off of there. Um, you can flip it off with your finger. That little sanding block sure does help because it doesn't draw as big a burr on it. And all I'm doing is getting rid of the, the little bit of loose plastic that it, it rolled up from filing it. Okay. Try to make it look as even as you can. Not that it's probably going to matter, it's just we're Dawson Precision, not Dawson Close Enough. Okay, if you can take a look at that. Got it. Okay, we're going to reassemble the spring onto the follower. Install the follower and spring into the mag tube. Install the Dawson Precision base pad. And we're going to load it back up again. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, twenty five. I just seen if you're paying attention. Sixteen. 17, 18, 19, and 20. Now, if you would like, one, it's going to take a little while for that spring to take a set. So what I would recommend is once you get past um, 16 or 17 rounds, go ahead and use the Glock mag loading tool because uh, at first when the spring is new, it's a little more difficult. After the spring takes a set, it, it'll be just simple. You'll be able to thumb 20 in there. So, um, and that'll give you a little, little play in there. So obviously you can see it's not a big deal. Um, it takes about three minutes to prep a follower. And like I said, not all followers uh, require prep, but if you put a Dawson Precision base pad on your Glock magazine and uh, you're not getting the capacity that we advertise, then the odds are that uh, the follower is impeding itself going through the tube to the base pad and uh, we just need to prep that follower a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. And that ought to be enough. Thanks for buying Dawson Precision base pads. And we're going to keep doing these videos to help people out. And again, thanks for your patronage.